Hello. Well, I'm Sahel from 2915V. I'm Aaron from 2915V. There we go. All right. So this is our robot. We've been developing it since, I guess, like, I think July. It's around there. We, we made it very early on in the season. It was uh, a horde, basic horde concept. So starting from the drive base, take it over, Harry. Uh, drive base is um, 480, right? Yeah, yep. that's correct, 480. Okay, good. Okay. Motor stock, which is kind of a weird motor stock, like a size 3 gears. Mm, yeah, we, we have a size 4 just so it can be lowered down. Yeah, two sacks, uh, lower down, and also for this thing, we can talk about it later. All right. But, yeah. Um, then there's also these size 2 gears here, which allow for the drive to be longer, and also for this crossbar to, to be here nice and close to the drive. Yeah. Much closer to the drive, and so it's like I guess stronger. Yeah, you could imagine. It is stronger. Yeah. yeah, and then it means it's just—it's a really nice tucked away crossbar. That, that's what the reason I like this drive so much. Although there are problems with it, it's still great. Mm. We also have room for the motors there. Like there's a lot less, I guess, stuff to get in the way for picking yeah. up, which is really nice. And then from there, I think before I talk about the horde, I'm going to talk about some of the structure things we did, which I, I really enjoyed to be honest. Is so a lot of people I see usually mount their channels weirdly, or like they'll mount it somehow off this bar or they'll mount it off the back bar. Problem with that though is it gets misaligned, so you can't really, all your bracing is kind of whack. Like this way that we did, where we mounted directly into the channel, basically meant that we can just go off standard metrics and always use straight bars everywhere. Yeah. So like, you can see from here that since we know it's like coming off perfectly from the drive, and we know that this is a size five off, so these are also lined up, that we know that this is gonna be in line with this, which means we can have a really nice crossbar right there connecting both of them. Simple like, stuff, yeah. efficient. Something we learned from last year, right? Yeah. Last year, our world spot had a lot of like thin washers on it oh. in order to get the spacing perfect. Oh, don't. It was like really hard to change anything. It was yeah. disgusting to change stuff. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, the systems, we have the brain on the side, we can fit it on the back battery mounted above the drive. It's always worked for some reason. It hasn't fallen out yet. Tank on the back, better center of gravity. We don't want to tip around. All right, boom. So after that, we have this aligner mech. We have this funny, what is it, scraper? Yep. And then we have the stages of the intake. Come on, all right, take it away with the scraper. Scraper, um, it's a bark box scraper, pretty much. We didn't call, we didn't hold count of them. They hold count of us, right twin? It's a, it's a lot higher off than it, like it seems like it should be. Like it's, it's almost like halfway up on the ball, but it, it does work for us. So, yeah. I'll probably, I'll put like a random video on the, to show off, like how it actually works. Um, the high strength axle is important. We were using a sound off before and it bent horribly. What? Yeah. <laughs> it bent really badly. Oh my Lord. And yeah. triangle braking is also oh, yeah. important, yeah. Triangle braking, braking with these shaft cars so you can make it adjustable, which is really nice. Yeah. Would recommend. Pistons tucked here. We threw a, a ton of bands here, because why not? Mm. And from there, it's this aligner mech, which is like, hold on. All right, boom, we're back. Had to help somebody cut. Oh, Harry. Okay, boom. The goat. All right. So we got the aligner. Um, fun thing about the aligner, we... Didn't copy this from anybody. This is a completely original idea, not copied from BarkBots. Um, <laughs> thing about the aligner is we did move this position around quite a bit. We found that this bit is pretty nice because it's being because it's so much farther out from the actual thing here. We have, uh, I guess, a larger range to line up. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it could probably be a bit better if there was polycarb there to mm. like perfectly match it, but it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, but we're not even keeping the robot for a while. Actually, we have to keep it for a while, but yeah. nah, they don't have to know. <laughs> Um, yeah, so from there, we can probably talk about the motor distribution on the robot. Because we already know we have a six motor drive. We already have a six motor... <laughs> this is the worst robot explanation ever. Um, here we go. So we have an 11 watt here connecting the hood motor here, and then this uh, little disruptor here. And then used to originally, if I like zoom in, you can see a little sprocket down there, right there. It used to connect to the top of here which would then spin this hood when it spun the bottom here. That was pretty good for a while. Yeah. It, it had good torque, it worked nicely. It meant that this was like, I guess, separated from this. So if this slowed down, this would still be moving at max speed, which would then shoot it into that tube no matter what. We switched it over to having a 5.5 connected to here and here because 
is just a lot more strain when you have it connected from the bottom to the top because it's spinning this when you're, I guess, doing basic stuff like in taking yeah, with the horde. It's better for the basket. A lot better for the basket, yeah. And then from there, we can talk about how it gets into the basket where it's like, should I turn the robot on for this? Press a button. Boom. Boom. All right. So, how the intake, I guess, works in a simple, very simple way is there's a stage right here, nice flexible stage. Oh yeah, we use flexibles over band roller. You, you gotta make the switch twin, it's so good, bro. Um, it's, I would say it's actually kind of worse for taking uh, stuff out of the tube right there, because just when it pivots around, it can sometimes, I guess, like, it just sometimes bounces against it, which I don't like, apparently, the others like it. Um, <laughs> Like with band roller, it's a lot better for that case, but overall, on the field, this is way nicer when it's pivoting like this for the bottom goal over there. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll like cut and paste the video, the cool one. Yeah. So that's why we use rubber band roller there. And we had this tiny thing here, this tiny gear here. And that's just our idler gear to, I guess, well, not idler, but it's a spinning gear to either push the ball up the intake or push the ball into the pat patented 2915V hood. Not hood, horde. Uh, horde yeah. Yes. We spin it. Yeah. And as you can see, ball goes from there, goes through there, and then you see the little rubber band uh, roller, shoots it all the way up. Uh, another cool thing is about how we get it in there, is we have a plastic ramp right there. You can see it. Plastic ramp, very useful. You can adjust where it is. You can use zip ties to actually like, hold it like properly in place. Another thing is that the, I guess the bands down here act as like, it just acts as a, a compliable ramp for it, so. Yeah. It's a lot less likely to get jammed because if you didn't, then it could just get fully stuck at a specific point. Now, the, the next two, the cool bits, the top scoring, this little hood and why we have this piece of poly here, and then this. So essentially, when this is spinning backwards and this is spinning the other way, if you use fried iron, wait, move the aligner up as well. Boom, shoots it out there and it shoots it into that goal most of the time. Uh, unless like some kind of explosion happens and we can't do it. So that's that's just designed to score for the mid. This is designed to score for the mid goal, and then for the top goal, the patented two nine one five V anti shoot the thing out thing. Yeah. Uh, is that a good patent? Uh, it's basically before we had this poly. Sometimes when we would put a ball into it, it could slip out the side of the tube. Because if you look at it, right, it's like those like little lips are exposed, right? And then that means the ball can pull out, which would yeah. be real bad. Because you know, you're gonna score it. Happened a lot if you weren't aligned perfectly. Yeah, it would happen a lot if you weren't aligned perfectly. Well, but with this, when you would line up with the, what is it called? The tube, that no, like even if you're on like a really off angle here, this forces the ball to always conform and then go into the tube. Not completely sure about the physics why. I mean, but it works though, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the aligner helps as well when you drive into the pole. Um, tuning with the sprocket sizes, that's one more thing we should talk about. We we went from small sprocket to really big sprocket to like medium sized sprocket. Um, big sprocket here is nice. Um, small sprocket in the center is really nice. But we're using the small ones on the bottom is like significantly better than the old big one we used to use. Yeah. It's just like, it's just so much better with these. So like, in the end, uh, moral of the story, oh, should we talk about like the stuff? And, no, we have a video from Oliver for that. Actually, I cut that in. Uh, yeah. So yeah, moral of the story, um, although Horde isn't like super duper meta, it's still pretty good right now. I would like, I wouldn't be fully far cried away from not building it, but I would definitely take some of the ideas of the robot. Like this cool little hood that doesn't stop a ball from flying out, or drive bases design, or how you use the mounting gear. Or like the pre-roller flex wheel. Yeah, the pre-roller flex wheel, goaded. Right, Marcus? You love the pre-roller flex wheel. Yeah. Oh. Do I need like an explain, like, pop? Hi, this is Zach from 2915U. Hi, this is Zach from 2915U. Mate! Hi. Oh, okay, okay. So a, a key component to this robot is the horde feature, of course, because this is a horde robot, not oh, a yeah. snail bot. So having the horde feature is this basket here. So what the basket does is we essentially intake with this front roller. And then this oh. roller here, transfers it into the basket, lifting it up. While this rollers at the back also help to lift it up more. When you keep intaking it, it will push up underneath each other. Now, an issue with this basket is the jamming. So we created this mech that 
avoids the jamming. So notice how our, the hole is one and a half times the width of a ball. Mm. That allows us to have the balls sit on top of each other on diagonals, which funnel them in easier. Our roller on the back here has gone through some iterations. <laughs> And we finally found a really good design, which has the rollers taper to the center. Taper. So you've got a two inch and then the 1.65, mm -hmm. 625. And then it sort of tapers them to the inside. And they can cycle out. Yeah. Score. Incredible. Beautiful.